Hi folks, Joseph Kursky here with you to talk about how to download and use data from the NREL Lab, the National Renewable Energy Laboratory, inside ArcGIS so that we can analyze it, make sense of it, and perhaps plan some wind turbines. So if I go to nrel.gov, nrel.gov, and I do a search on GIS, it brings me to this page as a choice, NREL Dynamic Maps GIS Data and Analysis Tools. Now the fine folks at NREL have produced a variety of great data sets for us to analyze today. And one of the things that we're going to do is we're going to analyze some wind data. So if I go over to Data Resources on the left side there, then you can see the biomass, hydrogen, etc., etc., solar. But wind is what we want, so we're going to click on wind. And today I'm going to grab the Colorado wind data at 50 meters in height. Notice that there's some metadata there, which is great. We've got a KMZ choice also, but I want to grab the zip file right here. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Now, it's a really rich data set, but it doesn't take that long to download. So once it's downloaded, I can show all and show in folder. And look, I'm going to copy it out of there and put it in my data folder. So I'm going to put it right here and make a folder called Colorado Wind Data. Okay, and I'm going to put it right there and paste it there. Now I'm going to use 7-zip to extract it to here. And so now I've got as you can see here, I've got a shape file, I've got everything I need right there. I've also got a couple of images, I've got some metadata, and even a layer definition, which I won't use. But let's go ahead and go into ArcMap now with a new empty map. And as I am there in ArcMap, I'm going to go ahead and add my wind data. So I'm going to navigate to the folder where I've got the data in. Remember, I've got it in this folder right here, Colorado Wind Data. There it is, my shape file. Great, let's go ahead and add it. Now, as you can see, and especially if you check the data frame properties, this is unprojected geographic WGS84. Well, we're gonna do some aerial calculations on this, so we don't want it in unprojected units because our, our units won't be correct when we do our calculations. Very important part of GIS. So let's go ahead and project the data using the project tool. And so my input data is this Colorado wind data. My output coordinate system, we'll worry about that in a moment, but where are we going to put this? We're going to put it in our folder, and we're going to put it right there. So we're going to call it Colorado 50 meter wind. We're going to put it in UTM zone 13. So that's what I'm going to call it, dot shape. And that's great. So the output coordinate system then is going to be projected UTM NAT83 Zone 13 North. Great. That's all good. Checking our name again. That's good too. I'm going to use this geographic transformation. And so now I'm projecting as you see down in the status bar here. Now it's done. And what I want is I want to start a new blank map now. I don't want to save this one because this will save me a few steps. If I start a new one and I add that data that I've just projected, it's in UTM and then my data frame will have that same projection. Notice now that the the north and south borders of Colorado are curved and now if we want to double check, which is probably a good idea, look we're in NAT83 zone UTM 13N. To symbolize the data, in terms of quantities, let's use wind power class and let's give it seven classes because that's how many we have. So also I'm going to do this. I'm going to bump down, just for speed of drawing, I'm going to bump down the outline for each one of these so I won't have any border or outline. And again, not only will it draw faster, but we'll be able to, I think, more easily interpret the data all right, so right now what I've got is a sense of front range of Colorado, some windy areas, but they're pretty small. These are the highest, actually, uh, windy, most windy areas in the state. And western part of Colorado, generally not as windy, as is the front range where the major cities are. 
with a couple of exceptions to be sure. It gets windier as we move toward Kansas and Nebraska, so maybe that's the best place for my wind turbines because I've got more area to work with. Also, I might have some issues with this being national forest land and other land use and land ownership issues. Would be nice to have a context, so let's add a base map in here. How about how about the National Geographic base map behind my data? That will give me some city names and so on and so forth that I can use to work with. We're really making progress here, folks. We're going to now take a look at some of these areas just near Denver, Boulder, etc., and look at the wind power class there. Actually, it's not far from the NREL office, which happens to be in Golden. Now, I could make the data a little bit transparent, right? I could do that through the display tab. And let's go ahead and set that to be a 35% transparency and see what that gives us. Let's go ahead and bump that to 50%. Ah, now I'm really getting somewhere. Now if I click on some of these areas here, now I can see what the wind power class is. Twos, ones, etc. But if I get right up in here, yeah, there's a six. But let's go ahead and pan to the east as we were indicating possibly. Let's go ahead and click on the identify button click out in here. That's a big zone of, that's a four, but again, overall that might be better. So we went to the National Renewable Energy Lab, downloaded a shape file of the wind power class data. Remember, there's a whole bunch of other data out there too, solar, biomass, etc. And we brought that data in to ArcGIS, on, ArcGIS desktop. Once we did that, we reprojected it so that it's in some sort of projected units so that we can work with it in terms of the amount of, of area that's in these different wind power classes. If we go ahead and open the attribute table, notice that we've got the different wind power classes here. We could also calculate uh, a field with the amount of area. And so if I add a field and I want to calculate the geometry there, let's actually do square kilometers because our data is in UTM meters. So let's do square kilometers, and we're going to calculate those areas in there. Notice, though, that uh, the data originally came from a raster data set that's been vectorized. That's why we have all kinds of little polygons and little areas in here. Once I've done that, let's go ahead and click on area and sort descending. Where's the biggest polygon in here in terms of square kilometers. Let's go ahead and select that one. Okay, so there's that massive area of wind power class one. I want to go to the highest wind power class, don't I? Because I'm, on, I'm interested in possibly locating some of those massive large turbines. And I could select all of these right here, but you know, I can also select by attributes. So I could say, please give me the where the wind power, power class equals, and then get unique values. Let's go ahead and select six, or the wind power class equals seven. And so let's go ahead and do that. And now I'm going to have all the areas selected. It looks like 14,000 out of the 159,000 total. This zone right here is the central zone of Colorado and a few scattered bits around north, east, and southwest are the sixes and the sevens in terms of the windiest places according to NREL. And this now is our starting point for analyzing where to locate possible expanded wind farms. I've got a lot of other things to consider, correct? For example, land use, ownership, access to the existing electrical grid, access to existing wind farms, infrastructure, proximity to highways, if I'm going to need to cart these things over there uh, with those big tractor trailers you may have seen, and or railroads. I've got a starting point with my data analysis in a GIS environment simply by going to the NREL site and starting there. Thanks!